We got a major iPhone 15 leak we gotta talk about. It's costing you money to stay with Apple, and a massive iPad design update is coming. What's up, I'm Royce and this is Apple Next, where I talk about all the latest and hottest Apple news of the week. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get into it. First up, another iPhone 15 dummy model has been spotted in the wild. Thanks to this video on the EFTM YouTube channel, we now have another pretty good look at what we can expect the iPhone 15 to look like. And unlike Unbox Therapy's video, he shows us what all the 15 phone lines are going to look like. So from the 15 to the 15 Plus, 15 Pro, and then 15 Ultra. And he states in his video that these iPhone dummies are usually seen in the wild to help companies prep to make phone cases so when the iPhone 15s do come out, they're already ready to ship their products so they can make money. Now, it doesn't mean that these are exactly what the iPhone 15s are going to look like when they come out, but these companies are pretty confident that it will be. Now, what I liked is that the fact that these models included the regular iPhone 15 and 15 Plus because all the news, all the hype have been about the Pro and Ultra models. And honestly, other than just, you know, some slight changes in the body design, we can probably expect a similar feel from the 14 to the 15. He does highlight that all the models are gonna come with USB-C, which is what we all pretty much expected. But what was interesting is he didn't really mention it when he was talking about the phones, but I was really paying attention to the side of the phones where the volume rockers were to see if that mute switch toggle had changed to a singular action button. And it looked like from the video that it still retained that same mute switch. So does that mean they are saving that action button just for the Pro and Ultra? Possibly, because that's what I've been most curious about if we would see that action button come to the regular iPhones. But even on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, as he referred to it in the video, it looked like the mute switch toggle was also on those models, which was also really interesting. So either that means the action button has been scrapped completely and we won't see it until the iPhone 16, or maybe that's just something that whoever made these models weren't 100% confident with. And since the action button's probably going to be around the same size as the mute switch toggle is right now, it doesn't really matter if it's included in this model, because as long as it's the same size and it fits these upcoming phone cases, then it's not such a big deal. Or maybe it is, because then the phone cases, like they would have to be made to account for the action button because we're gonna be pressing it a lot. Although it was hard to tell from the dummy models in the video, it does look like all the iPhone 15s are getting the dynamic island, which is interesting that they would account for that since that's just the screen part and they wouldn't account for the action button. I don't know, that's why with these dummy models and even with all these features and rumors, just wait, hold on, take it all with a grain of salt until Apple lays down the hammer in September. Next up, the iPhone 15s are getting a huge charging boost. So we just got some really good news when it comes to charging the new iPhone 15s and the 15 Pros. So all the new iPhone 15 models are gonna support the new Qi 2 wireless charging standard. Now Qi 2 wireless charging is a big deal because this is not a Apple proprietary standard. It's not like a made for iPhone type of certification. This is going to be widely available to every device that supports it. But it is based on Apple's MagSafe charging technology. And that's going to allow third party companies to create these wireless chargers that are way more reliable. And if you have an iPhone 12 and up, chances are you've already seen how cool MagSafe charging and MagSafe compatible accessories are. It has that nice instant snapping to the phone. It's strong, it's not gonna come loose, and it centers in the device right where the charging parts are on the phone. And to demonstrate, this isn't a wireless charger, but this is just a MagSafe uh, phone tripod mount. Look, snaps right into place. This ain't falling off until I actually like physically take it off. Let's see if I can even toss it on this thing. Okay, so don't toss it, but you know, as long as you're close enough, it should work. So yes, now Qi 2 will get all that awesome tech that makes that possible with MagSafe. And another reason why this is a big deal is because these third-party companies will be able to sell these cables at cheaper prices. So we don't just have to settle with the Apple branded cables. And the fact that even Apple assisted into making Qi 2 more like MagSafe is really interesting because that goes against pretty much almost every move they've ever made in the history of Apple being a company. And them doing this really signifies that we're really going to at some point see an iPhone with no ports whatsoever. It's just all gonna be wireless charging. And yes, we will get USB-C with the iPhone 15, which is awesome, but who knows how long we'll actually be able to utilize that. I mean, they could take that out in the next couple years and then now we just have the fully wireless charging, data transferring, 
iPhone, whatever that's gonna look like. And this will also be beneficial because all these third-party wireless chargers will be able to charge your iPhone at the full 15 watts. Where right now, any non-Apple certified wireless charging cable, you will only get 7.5 watts. So with Qi 2, you will get the fastest wireless charging on your iPhone, no matter who you buy the cable from. So yeah, I'm really excited to hear this. I think it's a win for the consumers whenever Apple or any company decides to play nice with everyone else, because I feel like that's really when the best innovations really happen, when everyone just realizes, oh wait, we're actually better together. So yeah, good step forward. Next up, Google wants to pay you to ditch your iPhone. Now in my last video, I talked about how Apple has increased the trade in price for certain iPhone models. And it seems that Google's kind of taking a similar approach, wanting you to trade in your iPhone to get their new Google Pixel Fold. So from the videos and everything, this Pixel Fold actually looks really nice. It's a new entry into the foldable market, an area where Apple's kind of just taking a step back right now. And it looks like Google wants to take advantage of that and pull over some people who are actually really curious about what foldable phones can offer. And just a heads up before I get into these prices, just know that the Pixel Fold is going for, for the base 256 gig model for $1,800. And then the 512 gig model is going for a little over $1,900. Just know that with these prices, it doesn't matter how much storage your phone has, whether it's 128 gigs to a terabyte, these trade-in prices will be the same for each model. So for the iPhone 14 Pro Max, you can get $950. For the 14 Pro, 900. 14 plus, 750. In a really interesting move, for just the iPhone 14, you get 350. So that's a weird drop. And they got other trade-in offers for other phone models. So if you're interested in the Pixel Fold, I'll have it linked down below. Check out their site and see what you can get back for your phone. And again, just know that even if you trade it in for the most, you're still paying over $1,000 for this new phone. But considering it's a whole brand new market, people are still trying to figure out where this fits in. You can kind of be one of the first people to experience this and you're now getting in at a price point that's similar to just getting a brand new iPhone. So from that perspective, it makes a little bit more sense. And it may just be worth to see what all the fuss is about, but just know that if you do order it now, they're not gonna actually start shipping till sometime at the end of June. So yeah, I really wanna know what you guys think. Are you interested in this Pixel Fold? Has it like, you know, piqued your curiosity? Let me know in the comments. Next up, let's talk about Apple's plan for their future smart home hub. And the plan is they ain't got one. <laughs> No, just kidding, but not really. Now the thing is, I'm pretty sure they're working on one. If they're working on a VR headset, they definitely gotta be working on a smart home hub, especially since Amazon and Google have shown that people really love these devices with screens that can control all your smart accessories. So you don't have to rely on your phone or your iPad, but we don't know how long it's gonna take for Apple to actually introduce theirs. So at least for now, they've settled on the HomePod being their hub that people will communicate with to control certain things and to talk to Siri. So to kind of help bridge the gap to whenever they release their version, it looks like they're gonna take a page actually out of Google's book and release a specialized dock that will work in a very similar manner as the one for Google's Pixel tablet. And it's pretty much a smart charging dock with built-in speakers. And I believe it activates some easy access to certain home controls. So I definitely could see Apple going this route, taking advantage of the smart connector on the iPad and if it has some speakers, so then that way Siri can talk back to you, you can play music. Maybe by connecting to it, it like automatically opens up the home app or some specialized view for all your smart accessories will pop up. There's rumors that Apple is working on a dedicated home OS software, which would probably be the software that is used in their smart home hub of the future. But for now, I think it is kind of a smart way to go and it will distract people for the fact that Apple doesn't really have a product for this category. And honestly, to me, it actually sounds like this is kind of Apple's way of beta testing how their home hub of the future would actually operate. See how people utilize the iPad with the dock, see what features are included, see what features people are asking for. So when they actually do drop it sometime down the line, it'll be ready to go and just work. Next up, Apple and Pepsi have teamed up in a campaign to help promote Apple Music. And this campaign from Pepsi is called the Press Play on Summer Campaign. And it's already going on where Pepsi's offering 400 million 20 ounce bottles of their Pepsi products with Apple Music QR codes. And those QR codes will provide free three months of Apple Music for new customers. So if you've already had Apple Music or you've canceled it, I don't think this will apply to you, unfortunately. They also know you could potentially win trips to Apple Music live events and some collaboration with Beats headphones. And these QR codes can be found on Pepsi products in gas stations, convenience stores, but they said they also will be popping up on TV and social networks. But yeah, this is cool. I love Pepsi. I think it's better than Coke. Yeah, I said it. 
and the campaign's running all summer long. So yeah, keep your eyes out for these QR codes. And lastly, we got to talk about this crazy new feature that could be coming to iPads. So Apple has recently filed a new patent for what they call a iPad updating button. And when I looked at some of the things they said it can do, it actually sounds like it's some type of scrolling wheel similar to the digital crown on the Apple Watch. Yeah, I know that sounds really crazy, but there actually could be a lot of interesting functions and uses for something like that. For one, that completely changes how you navigate the iPad. It could be used for easily scrolling through Safari, other apps, especially if it still includes a button that could act as the iPad's action button for special functions. It can even be used in a more professional manner, like with Final Cut for the iPad, there's a scroll wheel function that operates very similarly to professional scrolling controllers that people use for these professional uh, editing apps. And it allows for very precise scrolling and adjustments, like if you're doing color correcting and you just need to make the tiniest, most minute change, these types of scroll wheels help. So having that on the side of the iPad and kind of being able to very like minutely control things like that, even apps like Logic controlling the faders, certain plugins, definitely a lot of use cases for these pro apps. And when you consider that the iPad still has a touch screen and the Apple Pencil and all the features that come with that, you've now opened up a huge world of potential on how you can control and navigate your iPad. And that all sounds well and good from a feature standpoint, but now if we're looking at it from a design standpoint, it starts to get weird, right? Because honestly, I thought the direction we're moving in is getting rid of buttons, not including buttons. But actually saying that this could be their way of reducing the buttons, right? Because this digital crown could act as the volume rockers, it could act as the power button, could act as the action button, and you just have all that in this one thing that can just do a whole bunch of different things versus how the layout is now or even going completely buttonless. There's also a lot of opportunity to take advantage of certain accessibility features as well with this digital crown, however, or whatever it's called. So you put all that together, one end, yes, sounds bizarre, sounds weird. I, to even like see that on an iPad would just, I don't know, I definitely would have to get used to it, but I can't also fight the fact that there's actually a lot of use cases for something like that. And that doesn't mean that this is going to happen. Apple patents a lot of different things that never see the light of day. But if it did and it was a hit and a success, could we then see something like that come to the iPhone next? And that's where things could get really interesting. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Digital crown on the iPad. Is it cool? Is it weird? Is it dumb? Leave it in the comments. And that's all the Apple news I have for the day. I'll catch y'all in the next one.